Hello YouTube, welcome to Ambrose Landscaping Q&A Sunday, episode three. And in this one we have a lot of questions to answer, so let's go ahead and get started. Now it's been a while since we posted our last episode of Q&A, and the reason why is because here in the state of Washington, spring is here, so that means that we're out mowing and doing a whole bunch of work, so we haven't been able to have time to get to all your guys' questions. So what we're gonna start doing from now on is we're gonna start answering three to four questions an episode. And the reason we're going to do that is so that if we get busy sometime in the summer where we're not able to do a Q&A episode, we already have one made that we can load up so we can answer you guys' questions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started to the first question. So our first question is from Hunter's Lawn Care, and Hunter asks, Great page. Where did you get your trailer at? How do you keep it from having a bad smell to it? Thanks, Hunter's Lawn Care. So we found our trailer actually on the side of the road when me and my wife were actually driving around uh, looking at stuff. And we just found it on the side of the road for sale and we went up and knocked on the door and actually bought it the next day. Now I'm not sure what you mean by bad smell just because all landscaping trailers have a different smell to them. But here's a couple things that I do to keep my trailer clean and hopefully keep the air inside of it fresh. Now one thing that I always do is there's always going to be lawn clippings of course inside your trailer. So one thing I even do to even my lawnmowers, I always give my backpack blowers in every at the end of every single day or even every single job. I actually blow all the grass off the deck of the lawnmower, that way that doesn't start to mold and rot inside the trailer. Now the grass clippings that actually get stuck up underneath the deck, uh, that will actually fall of course to the ground and also create that moldy smell because it's starting to decompose. So you always want to make sure that your floors are completely cleared out and that you don't have any grass sitting inside your trailer. Now another thing that you can do is every now and then just go ahead and open the doors, try to get some fresh air in there. And like I said, just depending on what it, the smell really is inside the trailer, uh, sometimes it just needs some fresh air, just some good cleaning out. Another thing you can also do is just get some air fresheners and just some kind of spray and just spray it in there as well. So the next question is from Everything Outdoors TN. And he asks, where did you get the words and stuff for your trailer for the advertising? I have an open trailer and wanting to get a big sign for it, but not sure where to get one. So we got our signs on our trucks and trailers done by a local guy. Now I'm not sure what kind of names they go under, uh, usually these guys go under advertising or some kind of science guy. Uh, but just look in your local area to see if there's any guys that actually um, install vinyls for trucks and trailers. Another thing to do is if you're friends with any landscapers around there that do have advertising, stop by or even ask them a question of where they got their uh, signs done and then that way they can put you in the right direction of someone locally that did it for them. Alright, so the next question is from Hired Expectations and he asks, Jason. For those who are just starting out, how would they go about bidding annual contracts to try and retain more work year round? Thank you so much Hired Expectations for the question. Now this is kind of a big subject and it's hard to kind of get in one quick question and it's something that we'll probably go ahead and do a top five quick tips or even a whole segment about on how to do contract jobs and how to bid properly. Now one of the great things about having annual contracts is that you're actually getting paid throughout the whole entire year even in the winter when you're not working. And basically what you're doing is that all the work that you're doing in the summertime, you're getting paid that amount in the winter time. And what that does for you is that that way you have a steady income coming in because in some places, especially if you don't have snow removal jobs uh, where you're not plowing, um, you don't really have a lot of income coming in the winter, so this is what really helps that. Now, like I said, this is kind of a hard question to get all into just one quick little question. So we're gonna go ahead and do a future video on this, on uh, bidding properly and also retaining annual contracts throughout the entire year. So the last and final question is from Greenscapes, and he asks, do you lubricate the Edge of Pro so it spins with ease? If so, how? Now, yes, you do wanna lubricate the Edge of Pro. I actually don't, mostly because what happens is that once you start to get that groove, that edge, that over time that the Edge of Pro creates, um, the disc tends to uh, glide very easily through there to where you actually don't even need to lubricate the Edge of Pro at all. But when you purchase the Edger Pro, you get this little tube, and it looks like glue tube, but what it is is this like graphite uh, small particles that kind of almost looks like light sand. And what you do is there are these little ports throughout the whole entire Edger Pro, I believe there's two of them, that you just put that in there, you spin the disc, and that's actually what lubricates the Edger Pro. Now like I said, you don't have to use it, I actually don't use it, just because like I said, once you get that groove uh, already created, you don't need to really, the disc doesn't really need to spin, you can kind of just drag it along. And it kind of spins just not as much as before. But if you choose to, like I said, uh, Edge of Pro actually does send you a little tube of this uh, when you purchase it. Thank you so much guys for tuning into episode three of Q&A Sunday. 
If we didn't get to your questions this Sunday, be sure to check next Sunday. Like I said, we're gonna be answering about three to four questions each Sunday. Now, the reason why we're gonna do that is so that if there is a week where we actually get behind on work, and not able to put out a Q&A Sunday. Um, we already have one already made with all your guys' questions answered. That way we can go ahead and post it. It's a lot easier for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe and like, and we'll see you.